41 years ago in Paris, Henry Antoine Becquerel had the idea that stones exposed to the sun would absorb light and throw off rays of photographic value. These labeled stones gathered in different localities he placed on sensitized plates. His experiment turned out a failure as he impatiently brushed the stones into a drawer, one that had not been exposed to the sun fell on a plate, though Becquerel was unaware of it. For several days, continuous rain prevented further sunlight experiments. As Becquerel idly opened the drawer of his table, he discovered the stone on the plate, a stone he had not placed in the sunlight. Though realizing this, but for one of something better to do at the moment, he developed the plate. And thus he discovered that the piece of pitch blend contained a mysterious element which created its own light by the shadow registered here. From far below the surface of the earth, where no sunlight had ever penetrated, Becquerel obtained more pitch blend. With a stone wrapped in black paper so that it would not even be exposed to daylight, he proceeded to verify his findings. This would soon definitely prove whether or not the stone contained a substance which created its own light. Here was the answer. At the laboratory of Pierre Curie, a brilliant French scientist, Becquerel showed the result of his experiments. Sharing her husband's intense interest was Curie's wife, Marie, an ardent student of chemical research. A luminiferous stone. Here indeed was a phenomenon to excite the professor of physics. Becquerel had no difficulty in enlisting the services and facilities of the Curies in carrying on further experiments. Huge quantities of pitch blend were soon acquired. A long, tedious process of chemical reduction was underway. The purpose? To isolate the substance that gave off the mysterious light rays. Working tirelessly for two years, the Curies finally reached their goal on Christmas Day in 1898. From tons of rock had come a small quantity of uranium salt, a strange new chemical that radiated light. An oriental nobleman, historians tell us, was among the many who came to see the scientific oddity. From the beaker on the table there came a cold white light that grew brighter and brighter. Suddenly, fearing an evil spirit lived in the glass, the oriental became panic-stricken. Stunned speechless, the result of two years of long, painstaking efforts smashed at their feet through a silly superstition. Then, a bonfire of the room's furniture and carpet to salvage the precious salt. And with the patience of true scientists, the reduction process was again begun. Finally, it was found that because of the additional refining process necessitated by the accident, a more highly concentrated chemical was achieved. Madame Curie named it radium. A few weeks later, on his departure for London, Becquerel placed the chemical in his pocket. Although not the purest radium as we know it today, the small tube carelessly carried by Becquerel menaced him with death. The habit of placing the radium vial in the same pocket caused a wound that grew deeper and deeper as the days passed. The patient's condition became critical. Curie's fears for his friend's life were shared by the physicians who were unable to help Becquerel. Then, one day, the Curies witnessed a miracle. The patients suddenly began to get well. Soon they were to learn that while radium was dangerously destructive, it also had great curative power. Experimenting on himself with a small quantity of radium, Curie's experience was similar to Becquerel's. 
The idea that the miracle mineral would destroy diseased flesh and replace it with healthy tissue spread throughout the world. In America, the Colorado Rockies yielded a yellow sandstone that assayed one gram of radium to every 400 tons of concentrated ore. Following several years of Ottawa's labor, the first American radium was achieved. The success of five scientists, however, turned to tragedy. Inhaling radium particles cost four of them their lives. In the Belgian Congo, an eerie story is told of the discovery of radium. A leopard had attacked a native boy, lacerating him badly. Two white hunters had him taken to his village. Weeks later, on their return from the expedition, the hunters stopped by to see if the injured boy still lived. Though skeptical, because of the condition of his wounds when they had left him, they were shocked to see the head of the boy lying on the ground. Look! Buried, his open wounds exposed to germ-laden mud, a stupid mumbo-jumbo that would surely spell his death. The next night, the hunters returned to try and save the boy. Gone, were those beating drums his burial ceremony? But here another weird surprise. Alive, yes, and completely healed. In this weird manner, the hunters were to discover one of the world's richest radium deposits. A sample of the mud taken to Europe for analysis was to prove 16 times richer than the ore found in Colorado. Today, ore of the highest radium content comes from north of the Arctic Circle, where it is mined under great hardships. And so, to hospitals everywhere, comes this rare wonder chemical to help suffering mankind. After 40 years of scientific effort and the labor of mining many hundred thousand tons of ore, a meager pound and three quarters of radium is the entire world's supply today. Highly beneficial, yet extremely dangerous, this Jekyll and Hyde mineral is cautiously guarded. Lead is the best known protector against radium emanations. And so from a lead line safe to a small lead vehicle, we take the precious cargo for its first movie screen test. Note the lead camera shield for the protection of the cinematographer. Lead impregnated aprons, gloves and masks were worn by the technicians in making this screen test. Similar precautions were necessary in order to photograph some of the scenes previously presented in this picture. The cameraman gets ready to shoot a close-up of the temperamental star. Arriving in a custom-built limousine, it is handled with more care than Hollywood's most glamorous movie queen. You can appreciate why when you realize that dangerous gamma rays of radium will penetrate a block of granite a foot thick, like a light coming through a window. Direct contact with the radium pellet must be avoided. All glass is lead impregnated. Through the apertures in the lead partition that shields the body, the platinum container is opened. Camera. Valued at three quarters of a million dollars an ounce. Inside this pellet, a half of a gram of the powerful chemical in a tiny glass tube. A chemical so potent that in 1600 years it will still have half its life-saving energy. And so, out of the darkness of the past comes a white light of hope for today. Radium, the most precious substance in the world. Centuries from now, it will still shine upon some future civilization, saving through the ages countless thousands of human lives. <laughs>